The Toyota Camry has long been an American favorite and the best-selling car in America for quite some time. With the Camry sales thriving solely on its reputation, it's the main go-to choice for Americans who are looking for a reliable workhorse sedan. With so many competitors in this crowded segment, is the Camry the best one in the midsize sedan class? Well, let's go ahead and find out and take a closer look at this 2017 Toyota Camry LE. Now for the 2017 model year, I was actually expecting Toyota to fully redesign the Camry since the Camry has always had a five year product cycle which means that it usually gets redesigned every five years but this is the first generation where it hasn't done that now this Camry was last heavily updated in the 2015 model year and when Toyota updated it they changed the sheet metal of the vehicle and really changed the whole entire styling since the 2012 to 2014 models were pretty boring looking and they also updated the features which included added safety technologies such as adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning they also added the Qi wireless charging system as well now as far as styling goes on the vehicle um, it's sort of still bland looking to be honest and it certainly isn't the sexiest mid-size sedan out there but Toyota is certainly trying um, you have the spindle grille design as you can see right here and it looks somewhat daring looking but certainly isn't the sexiest mid-size sedan out there now not much has changed for the 2017 model year except for that there is added standard features on the XLE and XSE trims which include the Qi wireless charging system which is now standard on those trims and then you also do get the JBL audio sound system as well now here goes the key fob design for the vehicle it's your typical Toyota remote keyless entry um, you have your lock unlock to release your trunk and then your panic button Now it is a white exterior color with a full on black cloth interior. Power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar. All right, now stepping on inside of the camera here. As you can see, it's a very simplistic, yet pretty stylish design. What I really do like about the Camry's interior is the stitching. I always thought that was a nice detail that they had since 2012. And what you're hearing there is the base engine, which is a 2.5 liter four cylinder. Coming to your transmission, the Camry features a six-speed automatic transmission. It's your only gearbox if you go for the gasoline-only models. Now, it does have manual shiftability, and if you want paddle shifters, you have to go for the SE and XSE trim levels. And if you go for the hybrid models of the Camry, you do get a CVT automatic transmission. Putting the vehicle into reverse will reveal your standard rear view camera. Also does come with guidance lines as well. But no trajectory in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights and the hazards. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the exterior of the vehicle. Automatic driver's side window. Pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Halogen projector beam headlights, LED headlights, as well as LED daytime running lights are optional. Now powering the Camry here is your base powertrain, which is a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder. Now, Toyota has been using this for quite some time, but it's proven to be very reliable. It produces 178 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 170 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM with EPA estimates being an okay 25 in the city and 35 on the highway. There are 
other mid-sized sedans in the class that do get better fuel economy with their base four-cylinder engines. Now, if you want more power, you can go for a three and a half liter V6, which provides ample amounts of power for the Camry. But this 2.5 liter four-cylinder should suit most people just fine. And if you're looking for better fuel efficiency, then you certainly want to go for the hybrid model. But we'll see what this baby could do when we hit the road later in the video. Now pricing of the Camry, you're looking at $23,995 for the LE model, $24,675 for the SE, and then if you step up to the XLE or the XSE models, you're looking at around $27,000. Now competitors of the Camry, you have many vehicles in the mid-size sedan class. This includes the likes of the Honda Accord, Chevrolet Malibu, Ford Fusion, Nissan Altima, Volkswagen Passat, Subaru Legacy, Mazda 6, Chrysler 200. There's just many competitors in this class, but the Camry is still the best selling one out of all of them. Now, a controversial styling detail of the Camry here is this blacked out seat pillar. Um, it doesn't bother me too much, but it certainly is interesting looking. Now, the SE and the XSE trims of the Camry do get upgraded styling details, like a different grill, and then you also do have a different interior too. Of course, all of your basic powered materials, power windows, power door locks, and your power mirrors. All right, now taking the 2017 Toyota Camry LE out for a test drive here. Now let's get one thing straight. Now the Camry is not supposed to be a vehicle that's daring or exciting. That's not really what the Camry is about here. And I really hope Toyota doesn't change that because the Camry is really good at just being a regular kind of car, which many Americans want. They just want a car that gets them from point A to point B with minimal fuss, and it, that's very reliable and starts up every morning. The Camry is just perfect for that, it nails it. Now, the 2.5 liter four-cylinder we have here, which I'd say about 75% of Camry buyers are going to get, is, very powerful and there's really no need for more power here it's pretty good for a four cylinder now it's not exhilarating it won't knock your head off or anything like that but if you want more power you can go for that three and a half liter v6 but this four cylinder should satisfy most consumers and like i said if you are looking for better fuel efficiency go for that hybrid model now i'd say the best part about driving the camry is how comfortable it is. This car is a very comfortable highway cruiser. Now, if you go for the SE or the XSE trim levels for the vehicle, um, the ride does get a lot stiffer and the handling is slightly better on those trims, but it's not too much better to be honest. And this vehicle is not supposed to be engaging to drive. It's supposed to be a, be a vehicle that has a very easy to live with kind of nature but the ride is just very smooth in the Camry and I can barely feel any road bumps the uh, the road noise is actually also pretty good too um, it's pretty quiet inside of here I have to say very minimal amount of road noise now the Camry's interior is pretty simplistic and user-friendly, but it's also pretty stylish too. Now when Toyota updated the vehicle in the 2015 model year, they added more soft touch materials. Um, on the armrest, the mid-door panel, and the upper door panel, it's all soft touch, which is nice. Um, coming up here on the dashboard, it's this nice softly padded material as well. And like I said, I really do like this stitching. And it's not real stitching, but it's just molded stitching, but it certainly adds a more premium vibe inside of this interior. I also do like this wood grain trim that we even do get on our base LE trim here. But as you can see, the climate controls are very simple and easy to use. They all have big knobs and big buttons here, which I love. 
um, you have your fan speeds, your different zones, and your temperatures. It's very user friendly. Um, coming down here, you also do have your storage cubby, and then you have a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, and your auxiliary input. And then this is where you'll also find your Qi wireless charging system on higher end trim levels. And then you have dual cup holders right here. And then you also have a little storage compartment right here, or maybe a cell phone holder. Coming in here, you also do have a pretty large Sona console. And then you'll find a 12 volt power outlet down there too. Manually dimming rear view mirror, sunglass container, map lights. As far as the seats go, the seats are also very comfortable in the Camry and they're actually really good for long road trips. Thigh support is also excellent too and they're nice and plush. Very nice seats here. Coming to the steering wheel design, the steering wheel is okay looking in the Camry. Um, I don't think this is the most stylish steering wheel out there, however, it's certainly pretty easy to use. Coming over here, we have your steering wheel mounted to the audio controls and then you have your controls for the driver information center. Then you have your voice recognition as well, and then right here is where you'll find your cruise control stock. Visibility in the camera is also excellent. There's lots of glass area all around. It's easy to see out of this vehicle. And when you get to rearward visibility, it's also pretty easy to see out of the car too. Lots of visibility. Coming over here, we also do have your traction control off button, instrument windshield wipers, and you do have full instrumentation for the gauges. On the left, you will find your tachometer. On the right, you have your speedometer. And then coming in the center, like I said, you have your driver information center, which is controlled by this, these buttons right here. And then it shows you your vehicle information, such as the digital speedometer, your distance till empty, average fuel economy, trip distance, then you have your warning messages and settings, you can change the language, units, drive info, and then you have your eco indicator, pop-up display, accent color, you can also do a maintenance reset too, all that good stuff. The graphics and the rendering on this information center are also pretty good too, and it's pretty easy to use overall. All right, now let's get to the main head unit here. Now this is the base radio, or the base head unit that you'll find on the Camrys here. And it works fairly well. Now this is called the Intune audio system. However, it doesn't have the app suite. If you want the app suite, you have to step up to higher end trim levels. But this touchscreen is very responsive, it's quick and intuitive. Coming to your different audio sources, you do have AM, FM, Bluetooth streaming audio here, your auxiliary, auxiliary input and your USB port with iPod integration here. You can also reorder the list however you would like. And then up here you also do have your digital clock too. Coming to car, this gives you a little bar graph of your fuel economy. Then you have your trip information right here. It shows your average speed, your elapsed time, and your fuel range. Coming to setup right here, you have your general, which is your clock, your language, units of measurement. You have your phone, you can connect your phone, have your Bluetooth phone on here, have all of your contacts. Then you have your voice recognition, you can change settings for that. Vehicle settings, like your vehicle customization, like the lights, door locks. Bluetooth settings. Display, general, you can adjust the contrast and the brightness here. Overall, love this touchscreen here, very responsive and easy to use. You can also get a navigation system and all that good stuff. Now, the Camry is missing some desirable features that you'll find in some other midsize sedans. Like, there's no ventilated front seats here, you can't get that as an option. Nor can you get a panoramic sunroof. So there is some options that the Camry is missing that some other competitors do have. All right, now let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Now, materials do not follow back here in the rear, which I'm very disappointed in Toyota for. Um, it's hard touch plastic on the upper door panel and mid door panel, but it's still soft touch on the armrest, at least. Now, the Camry features one of the most accommodating 
rear seats in the midsize sedan class. There's plenty of leg room back here and plenty of headroom. Great for families. You also do have dual mat pockets and a little storage cubby. Rear air vents are also optional. And then you also do have rear center armrests with cup holders. What I'm I am disappointed in Toyota 4 is that there are no rear adjustable headrests, which is actually quite surprising to be honest. But as you can see, it's very spacious back here, and I have the seat pretty much all the way back. All right. The Camry also features a very spacious trunk and the rear seats do fold down 60-40 split by pulling the levers right here. They have an emergency trunk release. Glove box compartment. And you have a fully manual passenger seat. So with its roomy and accommodating interior, it's very simple and easy to live with kind of nature and it's superb reliability, no wonder why the Toyota Camry is one of the best selling cars in America. Now is it the most desirable choice in the midsize sedan class? Probably not, however it's the most one of the most sensible choices in the midsize sedan class. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.